All right. So um, here's what December is all about. We're all about the joy, right? And the joy and creativity. So uh, I wanted to kind of explore a little bit more of what we've been doing this year and, you know, taking things that we've done with inking or uh, Nailene's going to do paper craft and Mike Jazorka is doing like this like expandable comic, foldable comic strip thing that's awesome. And we're taking all elements of stuff that we've done and we're just creating stuff because we enjoy doing it in that joy, but it's not just for us. So my goal is for that, the stuff that we create in class, how can you gift that to somebody else, right? I don't know about you, but I love receiving like little notes or sketches and stuff from friends of mine and stuff. There, there's something very personal about that. You've taken time to create. So this month, as we create, I want you to think about too, in that joy that you have in creating, who can you gift this to, right? To bring joy to somebody else. So uh, there's three of us on, Mike, Jay and I this week, and then Nailene will join us next week as we wrap out through December. Um, and then there will be no, there's no camp this, this month. It's all just straight up free classes. So let's get into today. Now I'm, I'm getting into three cartoons as I do three or four weeks this month. I think I'm doing four. And these are the cartoons, Heather Rose, Liliana, good to see you guys. And the cartoon we've watched, but that's okay because this is one of my all time favorites, right? And it brings me a lot of joy. So, um, Yes, Laura did. And what's being shipped will go to the where you're at now. Um, so you're good to go. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to we're going to show rabbit fire because like there's a painting right here behind me, this thing, right, which is one of my new Chuck Jones gallery pieces, which I'm not really allowed to show. I don't think I was told I have to keep, kind of keep that stuff secret except for you guys. So just don't tell anybody. And um, it's one of my all time favorite films. So this just makes me crack up. So with that, Mr. Wizard, can we show one of my all-time favorites, Rabbit Fire, please? Come on now. It's an all-time favorite. I crack up every time. All right, dudes. So uh, let's get into today, which is inked compositions, right? And the whole idea about thinking about what we want to do, not just something because, you know, it's cool or things that are looked uh, congested on the page, but having a clear thought and an idea and then getting that down on paper uh, starting with pencil and then getting into ink. So what I want to do as we start off with today, we get into like compositions, right? And composition is about what, how things look on the page. So in this, my inked composition today is going to go to my buddy, Steve Finney. So Steve likes super bugs, right? So bugs money as super rabbit. And he's also a baby Yoda fan who we can now name because said creature has a name, but I think we'll all have to keep that in private conversations so far because Laura doesn't care, but Evie doesn't want any spoilers. And this is kind of a big one. Although, although to, in my defense, I'm pretty sure that we can, that you'll, you'll, the internet will tell you within the next, it's probably all over there now anyway. So anyway, I'm going to get into ink compositions and composing this. So I want you guys to think about somebody that you want to give this to, right? I'm going to give this to my buddy Steve for Christmas. So in compositions, I want to have something that's clear and not muddled. And so in my as in my sketch here, I'm going to have Bugs Bunny as Super Rabbit. And then I'm going to have a levitating uh, in his little pod, Baby Yoda, that doesn't name Baby Yoda anymore, but but we can still call him Baby Yoda. So I want him elevated here with the rabbit. And now I'm not going to do a super complex background, but I think I might put the two in a scene. So if you saw last week's episode, you know, it's that samurai Japanese film kind of layout. And what I want to do is I want to keep my horizon line pretty low, right? So I'm going to go on my lower third. So if I were to break out my pages into thirds, one third, two third, final, final, and then I have my two thirds here. I'm going to use my lower third for my horizon line and then I'm going to use my middle two thirds here, my left and my right third for where I'm going to put my character. And if when you're doing a composition, so I'm, I'm going to do this super light right here. So you can just kind of get an idea of where that's at my lower third or my right and left third lines are here, my lower thirds here. So anyway, I want to have something too, as I'm 
wanting to frame, like say they want to frame this, you want to have plenty of negative space around the edges, or at least I do in what I want to pull off that way. Uh, when they go to frame it, if they have a mat underneath, it's not kind of peeking through or it's going over the image. So that can be background and neutral, but my main focus I want to make sure is kept right here. So we are going to start and I want you to start with an idea. So think of somebody that you want to give this to my buddy, Steve, who knows who they're going to gift today's drawing to anybody. You can pop it in the chat, Steve, if you can m monitor or Steve, Scott, see, look at that. I'm already getting it wrong. Scott, if you can monitor that, cause I'm going to start in on my sketch here. So I'm going to go baby or I don't know. I'm going to go bugs his head up here in the corner. George and Victoria, you got to think of something. Maybe it's a parent. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a relative. All right. So I've got Bugs's body, which is kind of like a bean shape, sort of, right? It's a little bit longer than that, actually. And I'm just going to real light right now with my light blue pencil. I've got a leg coming out here. I've got a leg coming out here. So that whole joy of drawing and doing gifts for other people. Laura says she's making three. She's making three. Sweet. All right, so Laura, who are you making yours for? You can unmute if you like or pop it in the chat. Oh, totally up to you. All right, I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to do his fingers here because if you know what Baby Yoda, AKA, you know who, likes. It's going to be that little orb thing from his uh, from Mando's ship. Laura says she's making them for Evie, Tater Tot, and Cat. Oh, see now, look at that! Way to go, man! All right. So, in your composition, do you have? Do you know what? those people like do you have a favorite character that you're doing is it your own character let's see I'll pop this in here all right so i've got my basic character layout or like character kind of positioning down and then i've got my ground my kind of horizon line is here so i'm going to have just a shadow underneath bugs and then he's going to be he's going to be looking kind of that way. All right, so Tater Tot's not completely sure. That's okay. Maybe it's like a Christmas present for a parent. I don't know about you, but I get requests for people that just want artwork for Christmas. And I'm slightly behind on that order. So, all right, you got one. All right, Tater Tot, throw it at me. Who is the benefactor of your, of your um, sketch today? Your inked composition. <laughs> it's a surprise. <laughs> all right fine all right let's see so one thing i love about this is when you're like i love to draw you guys love to draw you guys always do a pretty awesome fantastic job and in that to be able to share that with other people i find 
brings a lot of joy. So this year, I am doing something that I'm calling the 12 art drops of Christmas. And I am sketching out two drawings per day of character mashups like bugs and whoever, baby Yodas, there's gonna be all kinds of baby Yodas. And I'm putting two drawings in one sealed envelope that's clear. And I am hiding them around where I live, the town that I live here and work in, that my studio's in. And then I'm gonna post it on Facebook and Instagram. And whoever finds it first gets it. But remember, there's two sketches in there. So one is for them to keep, and the other one is for them to gift to somebody else. So last time I did Baby Yoda, levitating a plate of those frog egg things from episode 10. And somebody got it in an hour. Within an hour, it was already gone. Kind of like, yes, so Brian Kessinger, yes, pins around places he visits for people to find. That's exactly, egg, exactly it. I also follow Brian Kessinger on Instagram. All right. So the cool thing is my, my buddy Steve loves, he loves super bugs. He's a big Superman fan also, a big Captain America fan. And I had a sketch that I had sold through Chuck Jones. And he was like, oh, that would be so awesome. And I think another sketch that went as a gift and I said, just wait for Christmas, you'll see. I just didn't tell him what he was gonna get. So the thing with Bugs and his super rabbit suit is it's, it's kinda loose fitting. It's not real tight, which I like, cause it's kinda, kinda brings some comedy to the piece. So the key thing about this, right, is we're thinking of other people and what we can create. Which is what December's joy is all about. And if you get a chance, um, I finally got the video up today because it took me, I realized that I did not ask the wizard where it was. And he is the keeper of all things magical. And so he got it to me today, which was my fault. And I was able to post that online. So hopefully you guys got to see Chuck do his joy how he just the guy is insanely talented and he just wrote out the word joy and i love the way he did his lettering all right so you all have interesting characters and stuff that i've seen you do as well that would be a good place to start if you if you weren't sure Nathaniel's hand is up. Yes, sir. Are we doing this because Chuck Jones worked on How the Grinch Stole Christmas? Oh, so he did. And you know what, Nathaniel? Um, way to segue into the next topic. Way to go, Nathaniel. It's almost like I gave you that, but I didn't. But it's almost like I did. So this Thursday... Um, I am hosting a, a the making of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and it's going to be on Facebook Live, and it's going to be on Zoom. So if you guys get the emails for Chuck Jones Center, you probably saw this in there. And we are going to go behind the scenes with Chuck's grandson, Craig. And there's rare artwork that you've never seen. Did you know the film almost wasn't made at all? And Chuck had to keep going at it to get Dr. Seuss to go to, to kind of do it. And Dr. Seuss would really, Chuck Jones was the only one that was gonna make this happen. So um, we're doing this Thursday at, what time is it, Scott? 4, 4 p.m.? 4 p.m. Pacific. I think Pacific. it's 4.35 p.m. Pacific. Yeah, so we are, doing, we are doing a How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the making of, and it is, I'm telling you right now, it's absolutely fascinating. Uh, well, I better go check it out. 
you yes you should man and we can put a maybe uh scott can put a link into how the chuck jones made yes so Lillian and Heather Rose, the, the um, Dr. Seuss really, he never intended his books to be made for film because they were short stories, if you think about it. And uh, so Chuck had to convince Dr. Seuss um, to do this thing. And, you know, the, all the art and direction and stuff that went in it. I mean, it was, there's a whole big process. It's absolutely fascinating. And we are going to dive into it um, in this interview series um, on this Thursday. It's it's a good show. It's from 6 p.m. my time until I think like 8 p.m. It's like, is it an hour and a half or is it two hours? I forgot. I think it's an hour and a half. Uh, yeah, an hour and a half. Well, the 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 non thing that we you, we'll get to see the film too. So we'll actually show the Grinch. I am I allowed to say that? I just did. So you, it's very cool if you guys can join on Zoom. All right, so I've got my, goes about 10 p.m. your time. <laughs> well, Tater Tot, are you like from the Midwest, West, East Coast? I forgot. Minnesota. All right, you're in my time zone. So I think you and I are in the same, I think you and I are in the same time zone. So it'd be like 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. our time if you're in Central, which I think you're in Central. All right, so as I've got my, oh, you know what, he's got, it's kind of like a unitard, right? We're right, Tater Tot, right? You're in the same time zone as me? You're Central? All right, we got this going down in his foot. All right, so if you think of all the stuff that we've done this year, what is your favorite thing that we have done in these 170 classes or whatever that we've pulled off? What would be an all-time favorite thing that we have done that you guys enjoyed? And by all means, you may unmute yourself if you would like. So I've got my I've got my bugs down, right? He's kind of got this little thing that he's enticing him with. And then let's see, there, it wouldn't be a bugs bunny if we didn't have if we didn't have a carrot. So we'll get a carrot in here. After all, that's what's allowing him to fly are these carrots. All right, so we'll, there's, there's, there's my rough. All right, not bad, right? There's bugs. And now let's get into, drop the sleeve a little bit. Let's get into, uh, Baby Yoda, a.k.a. blank blank. It's a two-syllable word. Man, I'm so close to saying it, but I'm not. All right. So, and I'm a little rusty at this, so we're going to have to see how this goes. We have this little egg-shaped container. I like when he closes the lid all by himself. I think that's hilarious. So it's like a cradle. Right? And then we got a, the same kind of shadowy spot underneath. Tater Tot said probably the inking classes to his favorite, but he said he enjoys all of them. Nice. I enjoy the inking ones too, because it's kind of, it, it, it's a challenge sometimes. Uh, especially when you're doing for like me to do stuff on the spot and things that I'm not confident in doing. <laughs> so I'm glad that you have enjoyed them. All right. So I've got my basic down now. The whole Baby Yoda thing is, if you think about it, and I'm going to just flip this over so that you can see. And remember we're talking about breaking down things into basic shapes. 
And if you look at it, you, you might think Baby Yoda's head is kind of a an oval, but it's more of a rounded kind of rectangle. And then dude's eyes are in the middle. Anyone have recommended watch series for Star Wars? Cat, <gasps> start with the Mandalorian. Have you, Cat? Have you seen any? What Star Wars movies have you seen? Let's start with that. What movies have you seen? Because I think Tater Tot and I would agree that Rebels, Clone Wars, for one, the animated series, is fantastic. So is Rebels. It's quite amazing. <laughs> uh, all right. So I, I would watch the original trilogy, which is uh, four, five, and six. And then I would watch uh, Clone Wars and Rebels and then get into The Mandalorian. All right, one, two, three, four. So he just has like this little fan that kind of goes out right here. And then the ears kind of go off like so. Nice thing about doing this little dude is um, once you get the basic shapes down, it, 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 there's kind of no way for it to not look and resemble him. And Nathaniel's hand is up. Yes, sir. So that's kind of like the rough, you know, basic shapes. If you're doing a character, remember, just break it out. So I have a question. Yes, sir. What do you think is the worst out of the Star Wars series? I will, well, I'll tell you what I think the worst movie is. Can I tell you that? Yeah. But to me, the absolute worst Star Wars movie, hands down, is The Last Jedi. What a travesty, in my opinion, that film was. And here's the reason why. It is because it breaks apart so much of what you know about Star Wars and feels right about it, and then just throws it to the wind and says, so what? And that just doesn't make any sense to me. Like the fact that Luke starts off and just doesn't care. You know, he's like, whatever, I don't need this doesn't it, it Luke doesn't feel like Luke n none of them feel like the characters that they that they we've grown to know yeah so there you go George and Victoria I like seven I, I like Force Awakens I find that one interesting I like parts of uh parts of the rise of Skywalker but overall when I look at the films I love Rogue One I think Rogue One was like a phenomenal film Rogue One to me is my second favorite Star Wars film, my first being Empire Strikes Back. All right. So I would I would do the entire arc was torture. <laughs> uh, the Clone Wars episode, A Sunny Day in the Void. No, you know what? I'll have to, I don't remember that one specifically. But I will... I will heed your opinion on that. Just one or two, remind, no spoilers, please. What? Just wanted to put a reminder, no spoilers. No, please. I'm not, I am, I am walking a very fine line right now. As, as you can see, I'm wa walking a very, very fine line. Now, are we talking spoilers in what? Just The Mandalorian or in Star Wars in general? Because uh, I'm not sure. It was just a request in the chat. Okay. Because there's a lot of Star Wars in general that's been out for a long <laughs> time. All right. So my, my little thing here is it's going to be me, this little dude, and he's got his arms stretched out. because he wants that little toy. Well, it's not a toy, really. It's, it's 
Mando, a piece of Mando's ship. So remember, even in the inking, like all I'm doing is getting down my basic line work and uh, I'm gonna go back in and there's certain inking styles that I really like. I love Chuck Jones inking style. I think it's fascinating. I love the rough kind of lines to it. To me, it adds more character to what he does. Same thing with like a Scotty Young, love that dude's ink style. Um, absolutely fascinated by it. It's something I would say I attain to achieve in what I in what I want to pull off in my drawings. All right, so there's my little baby Yoda dude, and he's got his he's got his little hand. Oh, look at that little hand. I said little hand dog, I didn't say anything else. All right. We got this little egg crate here. It's got some buttons and stuff on the front. Another thing too, when we're inking our compositions, we don't have to have all the information down in the in the, our blue our drawing, right? We don't have to have every single thing nailed down tight. Um, I've got where I'm. I know where I'm going with it, and then when I go to ink it, I'll ink in some of those pieces. So there's my little, probably actually need to bring this out a little bit more. There we go. All right. So there's my little dude, my little baby, you know what? Man, I want to say the name so bad and I'm not. Tater Todd, I'm just going to privately message the name. We can all privately message those who know. And I'm just going to say it so I can get it out of my system. All right. In all caps. There you go, all caps. I'm shouting it, shouting the word. All right, so how is everybody's drawing coming out? Who is ready to ink at all? <laughs> no way. <laughs> all right, Armin, that's fine. Let's see, I think Bugs might be looking over here. All right, now in my in my sketch, right, it's it's pretty clear where these two pieces are, right? My two main characters that I have that I want to showcase at the front. And that means that if I'm pulling in lines, right, I want to bring I want to bring my lines in as as a center to this, right? To where I'm not competing, I'm not having just squiggles all over the place. So, you know, if I were to do, let's see, I'll, I'll do a kind of an alien style background. We'll see a landscape, maybe if you watch the last episode or something. And then, like, if I've got twin moons. Right, it all kind of starts to kind of flow together, right? I've got this composition that's flowing together. It's all right, Laura, don't worry. Just start watching The Mandalorian season one. It's got stormtroopers, it's got all kinds of goodies. Maybe, uh, should I put the Razor Crest in here somewhere? Maybe Mando's coming back for this, I don't know. I gotta remember what the Razor Crest looks like. There we go, so, something to that effect. All right, so there's my little razor crest at the top. So I've got kind of things down where I want to pencil wise. And now I can start to weave in, you know, maybe some more of my background a little bit. Um, so let's say that if, if this is daytime, obviously this wouldn't be all black, but if maybe this is going evening or I really wanna bring in this being more of a centerpiece, I might do some heavier objects behind here that are more inked in fully. So, uh, let's say if I want, if I'm gonna take this little dude here and I'm gonna bring a volcano in. And then 
maybe my volcano's in the back like that. So you can start to see that, again, I'm pulling these pieces in. And then in my, in my foreground, just doing small pieces of land, right? And general shape, like little squiggles type here. And what I wanna show is just some progression from back to front. So as it gets closer, you know, as it gets further away, they're, they're closer together. As it gets closer, they're further, the lines are further apart, kind of giving me a little bit of distance. <laughs> you can do perspective. You've got this. And what's fun too is th this whole idea of just creating your own world of things. So if I've got this centered around my baby Yoda character and I'm going to ink in this entire volcano and I'm going to ink in a lot of this in the front, that's really going to pop this little character forward more, right? So that's going to make this a central focus. And I've got eyes and a hand kind of going in this direction. So that relationship between the two. And then even in my carrot, I'll put some definition in here a little bit. All right, I'm going to start to ink. Now I have my sort of like, I'm getting used to this pen and it's got a little, it's got a little cartridge in it, right? And then some some good brush hairs to it. So I'm going to start in and let's hope I don't freak out. This is the part I freak out on. All right, so getting the ink down. And again, I like, and it's totally up to you and what your inspiration is on stuff. But I really do like Chuck's lines and how he does it because it's not it's not um like a one continuous so if i if i wanted to do a very clean line illustration i would probably use a micron right because i, I would probably use a micron here because i've got a very like the tip on my micron is it's a hard tip right and it'll give me a one continuous line where if i'm using a brush pen like this I will be able to uh, press a little harder and then it'll give me maybe a little bit of a thicker line in some places. Or I can go real thin and then I can use that to show shape like I'm doing here. You know, like where I'm, weight, I should say weight. I, I can use it to show weight. All right, so. And two, like when I'm inking, I don't, what, what I like about the rough, like more rougher style of inking is I like the fact that my lines don't all have to connect. So if you look and see like where my Bugs Bunny, uh, where his cheek hairs are, they don't always connect. And, and I like that because I think it leads something for the eye. So we get his mouth in and this is if you ever uh, be a student of art right be a student of, of those that you really enjoy and like um, because what I do is I like to study those people that I really enjoy um, I'll watch like some of their stuffs on YouTube you know where they do the how to the how to of how they're creating painting inking whatever that might be and I learn a lot off of that. So you can see just getting some rough lines in with my inks. Pull Bugs' cheeks up here. So the one thing I don't like that this pen does is it tends to bleed a little bit because it pours out more ink than I may necessarily want. So I'm gonna switch to a different brush pen. And I've shown you guys this before. I like the Pigma BB, which is a bold tip. Looks like so. 
And this gives me the ability to do kind of what I was doing with the other one, except for I have more control. Nathaniel's hand is up. Yes, sir. May I show mine? Absolutely. <laughs> I love Yakko. Or is that Wacko? I love Wacko. Wacko, it's Wacko. It's I, Wacko. I thought Phantomaniac is Wacko. It's awesome. Are you, are you enjoying this series? Yes. I think the reboot is absolutely amazing. See, I have heard that from a lot of people who have said, if you love the original series, this one does it justice. Really amazing. I think you should check it out, Ben. All right, I will. It's on my list of things to watch. All right, Bugs is going to give that sly eye. So he he's going to give that sly eye to what's going on over here. All right, so in my, remember you don't, I like line weight and line weight is that thick to thin, right? So it's a thick line like so going up into something thin, giving your objects a little bit more weight. So like the back of Bugs' ear, I would use a bit of a thicker line underneath for this thinner part. I might do that just here and then I'll get a little thicker as it goes. You're gonna add character to it and you're able to, you're able to um, illustrate different depth. So I won't even connect like say that piece right there. I won't connect that. Do this ear over here. Um, this also goes to help in like just the speed of drawing. So I will tell you as we've done these classes now since March and I get kind of nervous every once in a while sketching and creating in front of a class because I'm always learning and there's bits of this that I'm, I get unsure of myself in. So all of this practice has led to faster drawing, which has been great. So I'm able to put my ideas down quicker and more accurate. And that's all just practice. All right, so as we're, as we're moving along here, does anybody wanna show, like I, I loved Nathaniel's Wacko. Um, does anybody have one that they want to show on what they're working on? Like, I would totally like to see what Laura's putting out for EV Cat and Tater Tot. If you're down for that. All right, so we'll get this S on his chest here. goes like this. And again, if you haven't had a chance to watch it yet, Chuck doing the lettering of the word joy, which we have on the site, it's on, it's on for the class. The class page is fantastic. And then has anybody found anybody that they have enjoyed following on whatever social media or books that they have found? Um, with artists that they've really enjoyed. So an artist that you were like, wow, I love this style. This has really impacted me and it's impacted my work. I will tell you that I found Nick Klein, who is the artist for the new Thor series, comic series. And I have found his work to be absolutely inspirational. And there's a couple of guys, who, or one guy specifically, and I sent this to Scott for his Instagram. 
but uh, he does the concept work for the Mandalorian. So all that concept artwork that we all geek out on at the end of the show, this guy is one of the guys that does it. And his stuff is ridiculous. All right. So again, I don't have a consistent like solid line through each. I'm giving my a little line weight. It's breaking up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna pause on bugs for a second because what I wanted to do was show a little bit in like getting a solid back and we've got about eight or nine minutes left. Yeah, there you go. Scott put in the joy video. All right, Tyfe does YouTube and just other art. She's a furry artist. That's cool. We'll have to check that out. All right. So little man here is little man here is checking out what he's he's going to use his force sensitive powers here. He's going to get that little ball. So you can kind of see where it's going. What I wanted to show was as, and I'm going to just ink a little bit in this back part so that I can ink the top part of this volcano. And even though so again, I'm not necessarily connecting all my lines there, but the thing I like about this is I'm gonna go in now. All right, and two, like, so Baby O's got these little hairs. So I'm gonna just very lightly kind of put some of these on the top of his head before I ink everything. I think Nathaniel would like to share when you're ready. All right. Yeah. I just want to know what you just said, like about furry. Is that what you said? Uh, yeah. Evie said she had an artist that she likes called Tyfe. Interesting. Yeah. Now, All right. Go ahead. Very weird to see. Um, I might draw Yakko. All right. And You're, maybe dot. I, I might draw all of them. Who knows? All right. Do for you. You got like six minutes, which is more than enough time for what you need. Because you're like a speed artist. So go for it. Let's see what you got. Challenge thrown down, Nathaniel. All right. Tater Tot said, Tariko Sotaru. I hope I got that right. Will always be one of your favorites. Currently working on an anime series called Ghost Club. All right. Uh, YouTube. They do some wicked animations. Sweet mostly country humans and the occasional appearance of their persona. That's awesome. I'll have to check that out. And then Laura said, uh, Mariah Elizabeth, she's on YouTube. Chloe Rose art is on YouTube. Mark Kissler is on YouTube and Facebook art for kids. That's cool. I find stuff like that to be highly inspirational. Game Tunes does animations. All right, that's cool. Is that stuff that you like and do? All right, so I, I will say that Ori, uh, Tater Tot, help me out. Ori and the something something. Help me out, dude. Tater Tot. Ori and the what? Blind Forest. Ori Thank and the you. Blind Forest. Yeah, that and what's the second one? That one I don't know, sorry. <laughs> Oh, oh, darn it. All right. Okay. So it was specifically the one in the blind force. I found the artwork in that game to be absolutely gorgeous. The character design, the artwork is absolutely amazing. And because I'm starting to get hip to the stuff, I had no idea what the, uh, uh, the Liliana and Heather Rose brought it up and it was, um, what was the game? It was, it was link something forest. Help me out, ladies. Something, the what forest? Somebody help me out here. Zelda Breath of the Wild. That's it. See, I was close. 
Hey, you know the forest one? You mean Breath of the Wild? Yeah, that. That's exactly it right there. Um, that one is on my Christmas list. So that one and the link, uh, maybe that one is, is the one with the link, the cartoony one. Does that have a forest in the name? Anybody? No? You know, the forest one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Link in the something. Link in the something. It's a cartoony version of the Zelda. Here's Cat. All right. All right, Cat. Um, my, here's mine so far. Awesome. So tell me about your drawing. Uh, it's um, inspired by a drawing a friend did, but I can't say which because it's a surprise to the people I'm giving it to. Okay, all right, yeah, don't, if it's a surprise, we won't, we won't ask you to share. That's awesome. Way to go, man. All right, so I am just, I wanted to get this thing just to show how, like, inking doesn't mean it's just lines down and everything else, you know, is, is bare. Sometimes... I find fascinating and it's something I work on getting better at is inking my backgrounds in a way that um, does more than just puts like dark shapes down, you know, and how that really becomes part of the drawing itself and part of the action. I really enjoy studying people, specifically comic book art is where I find a lot of that. And I, I find that absolutely fascinating how the artists um, use even heavily inked backgrounds. And it starts off when they do their process photo as the, like a sketch like this. And by the end, like there's so much ink on the page and that freaks me out because I'm like, what if I mess it up? To which my response to myself would be, well then just do it again. All right, so we've got a little the child action going on. He wants the little orb from Bugs. Would anybody else like to show as we're coming down to the final couple minutes here? Would anybody else like to show? I'd like to show a rough sketch of my Yakko drawing. All right, dude. Just let me finish the ear. Okay. <laughs> I love the expression. Nice, man. All right. So I've got twin moons going on over here. Laura uh, would like to share something. Yes. Okay. So I don't know if it's going to work. Um, it's a little washed out. Wait, wait. There you go. Check that out. Oh. That so this is, is actually Evie's character. I see that. Look at that. I think you yes, did. Yes, it is Evie. <laughs> That is an incredible homage to Evie's character. Way to go. Love that. Nice Thank job, you. Laura. Absolutely. Here's Tater Tot. All right, Tater Tot. Gift for Scott. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Just hold that up for a second because wow. I, see the, I see the ultimate 80s reference. We've got Back to the Future. We've got the Mandalorian, and we've got a the, Rubik's, the cube. Rubik's Cube. Come on now. Yeah. That's awesome, way, Tater way Tot. To go. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Very cool. Thank you. <laughs> got all of his favorite stuff in it. <laughs> way to so go. Cool. All I'm, right. I'm going to take a screenshot of that and, and print it out. You should. All right. So here is here's where we're going. Um, if anybody else wants to show real quick, Liliana, Heather Rose, if you guys wanted to, or Evie, or Armin, George and Victoria, totally up to you. Um, as we close out, yes, Tater Talk can send it to you. Um, so 
the joy of creating, right? As we get into December, this is the season of giving, right? We're using our talents. You guys are all incredibly talented. And you have a lot of creativity in you and using that to then gift to somebody else. So I love the ideas that you have down already. I think it's incredible. I would, we're going to explore and expand on that. Um, George Victoria, if you would like to share, you could, you can, if you don't want to, that's okay. Just let us know, pop in, yes, I would, or no, I would not. Um, so that whole idea of creating something for somebody else, right? And using your talents. All right, let's go to George and Victoria. All right, you guys are live. Go ahead and you can turn off your screenshot, even though it's an awesome screen. All right, let's see what you got. Check it out. Yes. <laughs> I sense a razor crest. Look at that. Way to go. You did a better Mando. Love the characters, man. Love the ship. We will all nerd out on last week's episode. Nice job. Way to go, George. All right, we have both of you. Oh, I love the Santa edition. Look at that. Yes. Merry Christmas indeed. I like the fact that Mando has a Santa hat on as well. Way to go, guys. All right, who are you going to gift it to? You can pop it in the chat if you want. So um, we're going to get into, as we go down, like I said, uh, Mike Jazorka is going to work on a five-week uh, series with you guys on the unfolding or the foldable comic strip which is awesome. So that starts to, uh, Wednesday. And then next week, it'll be myself, Nailene, and uh, Nailene's going to do paper craft, which I love paper craft. So like building images and stuff by cutting out paper. Uh, and I've seen some people do some really awesome layered stuff with that. So um, that'll be a three or four week series from Nailene as she comes on and all about giving, right? This whole idea of creating stuff and then gifting it to other people. So that season of joy. So keep on going with your drawings, guys. I'm going to finish my drawing. I will send it to you next, or I will show it to you next week on what my finished product is. And then I would love to see any of yours as, as you're finished. What, is, what do those finals look like? But you all have a wonderful week. Uh, look forward to Mike J on Wednesday, and I will see you next Monday. Have a great week, everybody. Bye. Later, dude. See you later, dude. Later, dude. 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 <laughs>